Dealing with outliers can be tricky at times, but the good thing is we have some techniques on how to do that. And not because they are outliers, we're going to delete them. Of course, we always have to think of our business case. This is where the experts' experience and wisdom come in. So in this part of our machine learning project, the most important thing that we have to have as a data scientist is our sense of logic and reason. I'm saying this it's because not in all cases our decisions can be affected by our knowledge of statistics and programming. Most often we're going to use our common sense, our logic to deal with and treating of different things. And also with respect to this logic and reason, it's always very important to talk with your executive head, with your manager, with a business owner, because they have this intuition, they have this reason that you can rely on when things become complicated to understand. So before we continue, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button down there because we do have a lot of free data science lessons for you. We have mastering machine learning algorithm, the deep learning mathematics, the different data science algorithms, the different data science tips, and a lot more. And don't forget to click the notification icon so you will be updated of what's going on in our channel. Please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to share this with your friends. So let's get into our job. So before we go to our final thing, let's first have a review of the steps that we have undertaken. Okay, the first thing that we did was we created our new environment for the reasons we've stated during the creation of our new environment. Then we knew how to read the data and also we studied the data structure and we did the data cleaning and we could not see any null values in our data. And with that, we also understand the numerical distribution and what kind of insights we could get from the distributions of each of our variables. And then we identified the correlation of our variables. We plotted the correlation values for us to be able to properly see the relationship between the pairs of our variables. And just recently, in our last video, we studied our outliers by understanding and identifying which ones can be considered outliers, even if basing on statistics, they may not be considered outliers, but then because of the experience, because of business acumen, some of the values were considered outliers. So if you could remember, we considered the 0.1% of them as outliers. And so this time, what we're going to have is we are going to identify what kind of features we are going to add. So I would like to point out that adding some features for our study needs logic. It needs proper reason. And usually, the key here is to ask. We're going to ask our boss. We're going to ask the domain experts in the subject matter of our project. So let me write here, add features and tweet them. So in adding our features, there are actually some kind of assumptions and expectations that we're going to make before we go further. Let me write these things here first before we discuss them. So basically the idea here is that the appliance's energy load is by hour, it is by weekday, it is by week, it can be monthly. And with this, the assumption that we can make here is that the nighttime would always have lesser energy load than that of the daytime. This is very logical because during nighttime people just sleep and the use of different appliances can be lesser in comparison to that of the day. The same line of reason can be followed during weekends and weekdays. So of course, people stay at home during weekends and so the energy load consumption can be higher in comparison to weekdays because people are in their offices, children are in school. And also because of these situations, we have to make our expectation. So our expectation here, if we deal with a scientific data science paper, this can be called our hypothesis. And here, the expectation that we've made here is that there is a correlation between temperature and humidity and energy load. That means 
when the temperature and humidity are higher, our energy load is also higher. And of course, the same is true when it is lower. So that means our energy load is lower when the temperature and humidity are also lower. The first thing that we are going to do is that we are going to make new features for our weekday, week, and monthly. It means we're going to make a new column. So before we proceed further, I would like to point out first that for us to be able to make new columns for them, we first have to set this one into a data frame wherein date is considered a new column because we would not be able to index our week, weekday, and month if we would not be able to make our date as a new column. So with that, we use the parse dates, then that is equal to, okay, you know this one, I know, and I believe that you already know how to do this kind of thing. So we did not take up this one in our last video so that we can properly go through what's going on in our data when we do some kind of indexing. Of course, you can also do that one here, but I think that's going to make our presentation in our Jupyter Notebook a bit messy. So it's better to always do that one in this part of our program. And also, please don't forget this one. Um, this part should have been there so that um, we could index date and, of course, we could index those values in the column date. So to do that, let's proceed. Yeah. So we are here indexing actually the different time elements that we've already mentioned. So that's right. Hour. Okay, so we will just copy paste this one. Copy paste. Okay. And we will just change this one into week. Then this one is week. This one is weekday. Then this one is month. Okay. Month. Right. So we are done. Then let's execute. Okay, so usually you can see this kind of warning and I don't like this one actually. So for us to be able to get rid of this warning, then we're going to use, we're going to import warnings, warnings. So with this, we can be able to get rid of this. So let's execute. And of course, we're going to execute this one again so we can get rid of that kind of warning. So there it is. It's now clean. And so here we've just created our new index column. I mean, our new feature for our data set. And after indexing these values, what would be the next thing that we are going to do? So this part is very much important for us to be able to process our algorithm later on and to do some kind of analysis of our data. So if you could still remember the log function, so when we did the the normalization thing. So we had that in our lesson before. So please review our mastering machine learning algorithm and deep learning mathematics because I discussed that in those two playlists. Please have patience to study them. So maybe you would like to ask me what is this all about? So let's go back to this one first so you could properly see. Okay. So let's remember that there are values that are very small, like for example, 60, there are 50. And there are also other values which are smaller than 60. And let's remember that the highest value that we have in here after deleting the 0.1% of the values in our data, which we considered to be outliers, is 790 or 790. So in comparison to 60, this is actually very much big. And now, if we are going to just use these raw values of our energy load, and when we apply our algorithm to do the forecasting or predicting, then that's going to be a very big problem. That's going to give us a very bad prediction. So most likely, when we are going to graph these values, this would not be able to give us a normal distribution. So for us to be able to remedy this kind of problem is that we're going to use the log function. And to to do that, let's have this one. So once again, please review 
or study our lesson about this one in our deep learning or it could be in mastering machine learning algorithm it's there actually we're going to use this appliances appliances all right okay so now we are going to execute this okay so it says here np is not defined so we have actually not imported our numpy so we have here an error which is np is not defined how come we have not yet imported our numpy so let's import it so let's do this one okay so it's already solved the next thing that we're going to do is that we are going to get the averages of our house temperature and our house humidity so to do that we are going to have another feature so df house temperature let's just call this one house temp okay so and how to do this so let's remember this that let's go back first to our data frame so we have your t1 t2 t3 t4 and so on and so forth so these are the values that we're going to add and we're going to divide that by eight because they are just eight temperature values here for us to be able to get the average so we will have this df sorry dot t1 plus plus df dot t2 so with this actually we can be able to get the average and then also we are going to get the df i mean the the average of the humidity so let's have house and the same process that we did in here we will also do the same here okay so we actually have nine features for temperature and humidity so here we are not actually considering the humidity and temperature outside of our house so as you could see df.t5 then we proceed directly to df.t7 the same is true with respect to our house humidity so we skipped number six maybe you would like to ask me what is the reason behind this one so let's check first our legend here our information so rh6 is actually the humidity outside the building and also t6 is the temperature outside the building so we are not actually considering here these features outside of our building we are just considering those features inside our building so that's why we only have eight features that are considered we will now execute this one but of course if you are very much interested to get the values of these things and you would like to see that with your naked eye of course we can do that we can just have this one then house temp then dot head okay then here this shows you the different values of the house temperature during the different time intervals right and you can also do this one with respect to the house humidity so let's see what is in there so let's change this one to house hum okay then let's execute so you could see here we have a 46.74 to 500 and so on and so forth so again we are considering here the 10 minute time interval of course in our future execution we will understand how to change our time interval which is actually very much important because we are here considering different time elements and when we are going to do this one we're going to follow this there, there would be a lot of noise in our data and that can really affect our prediction or forecasting and so with this the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to remove the different additive assumption let's right here remove additive assumptions and maybe you would like to ask me what is this kind of additive assumption so how does it relate to our lesson so for us to be able to know this one let's first go to this so let's remember this that we have a lot of features and these features are independent from each other so that means 
that their values are actually constant. So if we are going to have T1 and then R H1, then T1 is in no way affect R H1 and vice versa. But then of course, we always believe that there must be some kind of interaction between T1 and, and R H1 and also the same with T2 and R H2 and so on and so forth. And this kind of interaction is actually very inevitable as far as our certain condition is concerned. And to say that the effect of R H1 to our energy load for appliances does not in any way affect or relate to T1, I would believe that this kind of situation or presumption is not good in our modeling. So the best thing that we are going to do is we are going to remove the additive assumption. And with that, we are going to create a certain value that could affect the interaction between the different variables. So we have here T1 for R and RH1, T2 and RH2. And how to do that? We're going to multiply their value. So we're going to have this. Okay, so now, so in this case, we are actually considering also the lights. The reason for this is the use of lights creates some kind of energy, and this energy affects the temperature and humidity of the room. That's why we include this one. Okay, so as you could see, we have here df.d3 and rh3, t2 for rh2, and so on and so forth. So as you could see here, we have already included. RH6 as far as this kind of situation is concerned because it can also contribute to the energy load of our home appliances. Okay, so let's execute this one. And what's the next thing to do after removing our additive assumptions? We are now going to calculate the average energy load per weekday and per hour. So we're going to use this. So of course we will have this kind of code so let's execute this one okay so and the next thing to do is that we are now going to calculate the average energy consumption per weekday and per hour so to do that let's have this one so using this one um we would be able to have the mean values of the different categories and this creates a list and with this we could index these values so let's execute this and for us to be able to know if we are very much curious what these average values are then we are going to have this okay let's just copy paste this one okay so let's make our life easier head. okay so there you are, the average weekday value for this time is 110.8, blah, 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 and so on and so forth. So you have in there. And also, if you would like to get this one, we are going to do the same thing. Oops, so sorry. It's not like that. So we'll have this. And, okay. Right. So see, we get here the average which is 158.812121 so this is the average value this is per hour so there you go guys we have created the different new features for our data set which are very important for us to be able to process our data based on our objective and for us to be able to use the algorithm very much properly so if you want to know more about this channel please click the card on your screen because we do have a lot of free data science lessons. We do have mastering machine learning algorithm, deep learning mathematics, data science algorithms, and a lot more. Here, you can always learn and upskill for free.